it's Miss Fiona again. Uh, I thought you'd maybe like to make a little prop for this week's music movement lesson. We're going to be looking at three new animals. We're still in our continent of Africa. So one of the animals we're going to be looking at as a little inside knowledge is going to be a hippo, a hippopotamus. So we, if you would like to, are going to make a hippopotamus mouth to wear during our music movement lesson. Okay, so what you're going to need for this session is some newspaper to cover your table in. If you already have something at home on your table that, that every, the adults at home say you don't need to cover your table, then that's great too. I'm just using some newspaper to protect my table so I don't get into trouble. Now, the other things you're gonna need is some kind of box. So you could use like an old breadstick box or cereal boxes are really good because um, they're nice and big. You can have a really big hippo jaw. But any of these kind of um, boxes, um, if they're empty, then fantastic. If they're not, then maybe you could put, um, if they come in extra packets inside, you could maybe put them somewhere else. Um, we don't have any cereal boxes, so my hippo face is gonna be a little bit smaller. Okay, I am going to use this box for mine. Okay, now if you don't have any boxes or any cereal boxes or anything, you could also use like an old card or something. Um, you could cut one bit out of one and one bit out of the other, just as an alternative, if, especially if the recycling's just gone out. You're also gonna need some scissors. You're going to need some white paint, some red paint, and some black paint. Don't worry if you don't have paint at home. You don't need to paint your rhino face at all, okay? You also need to have two little pots to mix your paint in, or just one pot you can wash it out in between the colours, um, and two paintbrushes. Towards the end, you're gonna need some sellotape and you're gonna need some string, okay? So if you would like to pause it there and see if you can go and find all of your resources. Okay, have you got them all? Fantastic. All right, so what I want you to do with your box, when you've chosen your box, if it's got one, two, three, four sides, when you look at it around this way, okay, it should have another two like that. If it's got that amount of sides, then you can um, open it up as a box like this. Doesn't matter if you rip that bottom bit, okay? Because we're only going to use this bit around here that we were counting. Okay, so now you should be able to see through your box. <laughs> okay, so now what I want you to do is I'd like you to cut along one of these edges, okay? Now make sure if you're, um, if you're only just getting the hand of, hang of using scissors, make sure you get someone to keep an eye on you when you're doing this just so that you're nice and safe, okay? So we're gonna cut down one of those lines, can you see? Now what do I need to remember when my scissors get to the end? I need to move my hand out of the way, don't I? Otherwise I'm gonna snip my fingers. Okay, so I'm gonna cut down my line, and when I get to the end, I'm gonna move my hand somewhere else so that they don't get chopped. Okay, and I'm gonna carefully cut along there. And again, don't worry if you didn't do a careful line, I'm gonna just shut my scissors so they're nice and safe. So now you should have an open box, so it's gone from being a 3D shape to a 2D shape, okay? Now you'll notice that, if you look on the white side, you'll notice that it's made up of a small part, two big parts, and another small part. So it's got two small thin parts and two thicker parts, okay? So what we want to do is we want to end, cut out and end up with these two big parts, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut down this line, cut down this line, and I'm gonna cut down this line, okay? And again, being really careful of those fingers. So I've cut down one of those lines already, I just need to cut down this one and this one, okay? Well, my line's not perfect, but it's going to be okay. It won't matter. Okay. So now I've cut down all of my bits, gonna put my scissors down, and I'm gonna just put those two thin parts to the side because I don't need them right now, and I'm gonna be left with my two thicker parts, okay? So I've got the two thicker parts of my box. Now what I want to do is I want to cut away 
this top flap, it, there isn't one at the bottom here, so I'm going to cut away this top half of this side. I'm going to cut along that line. Always, always being careful of those fingers. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of that bit. So now I've just got one big square. And on this side, I need to get rid of that bit and I need to get rid of that bit, okay? Now I know your boxes at home will be a little bit different. Maybe someone can help you if you're not sure which bit um, to cut off, okay? Move my fingers out the way. Okay, so I've got all my little bits that I'm not using there, my scissors safely there, and I've got my two nice big bits. Okay, so what you want to do now is you want to cut yourself a shape that's a little bit like that, okay? Because that is going to make the shape of your hippo face, okay? It's going to be like a half, half of an oval, okay? So you might want to use a pencil to draw that. If you don't have a pencil, just go and grab one. Okay, so I'm going to draw on mine my oval shape. Like that. Okay, see how it's not perfect? I've got a bigger gap on that side, haven't I, than that side? But it doesn't matter. Okay, so now I'm going to cut that out. Put aside this bit that I'm not going to need. Okay, and it looks like that. Now use that side, okay? to draw a template on this one, okay? You can draw around this shape and then you have a matching shape, okay? So draw around the first shape you cut out, using it like a stencil, okay? So now you have two of the same shape, okay? So I'm going to cut that out quite good cutting practice, isn't it, as well? Cutting along lots of lines. Okay. So now I have the top part and the bottom part of my hippo mouth. Okay, so I'm just gonna put them there for the moment. Now I've got some bits from the thinner parts of my box left over, okay? These kind of bits. Now I'm just gonna take one of them and I'm going to draw some teeth onto it. So you know that sort of half of an oval shape that we drew on that box? I'm going to draw lots of small ones of those, okay? Anything between one centimeter and two centimeters wide, okay? So, now hippos have got really big teeth. Two really big teeth at the top. That's how you often notice, okay? And I'm gonna draw four teeth. Okay, four nice big teeth. Okay, and then I'm going to cut them out. Pause this video at any point if you want to slow down or you want to catch up. Okay, don't feel you need to keep going at this pace. Okay, I've got one two teeth already cut out. They're for the top of my mouth. Now I've got one teeth for, tooth for the bottom of my mouth and another tooth for the bottom of my mouth. Okay, so I've got two teeth. Ooh. Two teeth for the bottom and I've got two teeth for the top. Okay, so the teeth I can put up here. I'm going to save them. Okay, up there, they're going to stay. If your cardboard box is white on the inside or creamy on the inside, you can just leave them like that, okay? And now I'm gonna get rid of all of these bits here that I don't need. 
I'm going to put them in the recycling because they're cardboard, but do check if they're mixed recycling or if they're not recyclable, which bin you're putting them in. Okay, so I'm going to put my scissors up here out of the way because I don't need to use them right now. And now I need to do some paint. So if at home you need an apron or something like that, then maybe go and grab one. Um, like I said, I've protected my table with some newspaper. Okay, I'm going to roll my sleeves up as well because I don't want to dip my arms into it of my sleeves. But I'm not going to wear an apron because I don't think I'm going to make a mess and I'm not wearing a precious jumper. Okay, so the first colour I'm going to do is the grey, which is the top of the hippo's head. So you see the one I made earlier. The top of the hippo's head is going to be that colour and the inside of their mouth is going to be pink. That's right. So to make the grey, which of these two colours do you think I need to mix together? I need to mix together the black and the white. So I'm going to take the white and in my mixing pot, I'm going to put in a dollop of white. Okay. Now my paint goes quite far, so I don't need to use that much. Try not to overuse your paint. You can always add more, okay? Because we don't want to waste it. So you can see I've got a dollop of white in there and I'm going to put a smaller dollop of black in there because the black is very strong, bubble. The black is very strong and so it overpowers the white. And we don't really want a dark gray. We want a kind of medium gray, okay? So you can see I've got the black and I've got the white in there, okay? And I'm going to use my paintbrush to mix it up And you can see now I've got a pale grey, okay? So I'm going to paint the top part of my card with the grey, okay? And I'm gonna leave the pink for the, that nice white part. And I'm gonna paint the top of my cardboard in the grey. Can you see? I can still see a bit of the underneath, can't I? I don't really mind about that. You can do a bit of a thicker coat if you want, but for the grey part, we see more of the pink part, okay? So for the grey part, you can do a thicker coat if you, don't, if you want. And as I said, if you don't have paint at home, don't worry, okay? It's not the end of the world, and you don't need to have painted them at all, okay? So once you've painted the whole of your shape in grey, you can do the other one. Okay, then when you've done both of those, put them somewhere to dry. Okay, and then paint the underside pink. So to paint the underside pink, you're going to be using which two colours do you think to make a nice pink? We need the pink, I mean we need the red and we need the white. If you already have pink at home though, you can use pink and if you already have grey at home, you can use grey, okay? Um, I just only have these colours. I only have the white, the black, and the three primary colours. So I'm just working with what I've got. So in your pot, again, a, a dollop of the white. And just with the black, just the same with the black when we were making the grey, a smaller, a smaller dollop of the red, okay? So you can see I've got my white and then I've got my red and I'm gonna mix it up to make a nice pink. That was one of my favorite discoveries when I first started to paint was that white and red made pink and now I've got a lovely pink for the inside of the mouth. Ooh, I'm gonna pop that there. Okay, so I'm gonna paint the underside of my cardboard once the gray has fully dried. I'm gonna paint it a nice pink. Can you see? So, one side should be a nice gray and one side should be a nice pink. Okay, now the gray is probably already dried but you're going to need to leave them somewhere now to fully dry until the next stage, okay? So 
So you can move everything out the way that you're not going to need. You're not going to need your paint anymore. You're not going to need your paint brushes or your paint pots. So while your parts of the hippo were drying, you could have been washing them up or you could have been putting the paints back where they live in your house, okay? So we don't even really need our newspaper anymore. I'm gonna keep it there because in this stage, if you didn't have sellotape, if you don't have sellotape, you could use some glue, okay? It would be a little bit trickier but you can use some glue anyway. And in that case, you might wanna keep your newspaper down. So I'm gonna get the ones of mine that are nice and dry. Okay. Now I've got two gray parts and I've got two pink parts, okay? And the gray parts are gonna be the top and bottom of my mouth and the pink part is gonna be the inside of my mouth. Okay, for my nice big hippo head, okay? so. Now we want to attach our teeth. So I'm going to take the top part of my mouth, bearing in mind that the grey is going to be on the very top and the pink is going to be on the inside. Okay, so the underside there and the grey side there. Okay, because so I want my teeth to be pointing down that way, my front too. So using a bit of sellotape, I'm going to put my tooth glue my, uh, so, sorry, sellotape my tooth onto there like that, okay? Can you see I've got one tooth now, okay? And I'm gonna get my other tooth. Don't need lots of sellotape for this either. And I'm going to leave a gap a gap that fits nearly two teeth in it okay and there you have got the top part of your hippo mouth okay so now I want to make the bottom part of my hippo mouth and now I'm gonna have the pink side looking up and I'm gonna have the gray side looking down Okay, because remember it, the two pink bits need to mirror each other. Okay, so mine's curved a bit, as yours. You might want to curve it back into shape a bit, okay, so that they're a little bit flatter. Okay, if they curve in up that way, that's quite nice. If they curve down that way, you might want to point it back up a little bit. So I'm going to get a piece of sellotape. I'm going to get my tooth and it's going to want to point upwards this time. Okay, now with these ones, I'm going to stick them in the middle, right next to each other. Okay, so that they sit in the middle of those two teeth. Now for the ones on the bottom, because you're making them stand up, you might want to put a bit of sellotape on the top and a bit on the bottom to make them stay up. Do ask for help from someone if you want a little bit of help doing this. It's a little bit fiddly, okay? So my second tooth's gonna go on like that. So I'm gonna put my piece of sellotape at the top and then I'm gonna put a second piece of sellotape at the bottom. Okay, so there's the bottom side of my mouth and there is the top side of my hippo mouth. Okay, so now, I want these bits to come together. Okay, let's put another bit of sellotape on here to hold these teeth down as well. If, like mine, yours are flopping around a bit, because teeth don't flop around. Okay. okay. Stands up a bit better, doesn't it? Okay, not so floppy. So, and again, I'm gonna just bend that a little bit because it was starting to curve. So now you can see I've got my nice big hippo mouth. Okay, So now what you want to do is you want to make a hole. You want to make four holes, okay? If you've got a hole punch at home, fantastic. If you don't have a hole punch, please ask an adult to do this. 
okay, because you need to use the point of your scissors to make a hole. It's much easier if you've got a um, hole punch. So I'm going to make a little hole in here, in that bottom corner. My teeth are up the front there, and I'm going to make another hole there. Can you see? Like that, okay? Now I'm going to do the same on the other one. Making sure that my fingers are not at the other side to meet those scissors, okay? That's why it's really important you need to ask an adult. So they've both got two holes like that, okay? So now what I want to do is I'm going to string these together, okay? I'm going to cut two pieces of string about 30 centimetres long. Okay, so I'm going to go with about that long. Now, I'm giving myself a little bit of extra length there, okay, so that I can tie a bow comfortably. Okay, so two pieces of string. Now, one piece of string wants to go through the bottom and through the top and you can just tie a little knot there make sure that it doesn't come back through so that's one piece of string now the other piece of string I go through on the other side Now you could also, when you're cutting out your teeth, you could have added things like a little tongue and stuff like that, okay? <clears throat> you could have done some more teeth as well. Right, let's just make sure your teeth are in place. And then what you're gonna wanna do is at home, you're gonna want someone to help you tie that onto where your mouth is, okay? Tie it on like this. So you've got a big hippo mouth. Okay, wah, wah. <laughs> See you on Friday for Music Movement and fantastic if you've made a hippo mask, bring it with you.